Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So I had a little time this morning, uh, some parts are coming, then I have to get to work. I have uh, a lot of other stuff to do over there, so um, anyway, you know, when you work on this stuff each, every day, it's kind of hard to work on your own stuff to find the motivation, so pushing myself to get this done. This will be the prototype, my own personal amp. Um, we're using a cabinet, really cool cabinet, and I already have a bunch of the parts, um, so this is not for sale, but I will, um, if I make more, uh, I'll be in a nice new cabinet, and uh, I'll be different, be more similar to the 6 meter amp, and, um, you know, same design though. So, okay, so this is 80 through 15, I'm going to try to get it down on 160, so I went ahead and, like I said, I'm reusing this. I I'd started making a, a dual band amp years ago with this cabinet, same tube. Um, like I showed in the other video, you know, this had a wall and everything. I put this plate in, uh, 0.125, you know, eighth inch thick. And so I have some extra holes from components I'd removed. So I made sure I spaced the load vacuum variable, proper di uh, distance from ground. Uh, there will be a wall right here. I'll show you that in a second. And then the plate side is right here. So I punch the hole, punch the hole, drill all the holes, bird them. So this is getting a progressively shorting rotary switch. I've seen lots of amplifiers built. I'd say nine times out of ten, it has a you know custom amps. People homebrew stuff. They use a roller ductor. That's easier, but it's really not the way to go when it comes to an amp that's that's going to be changing bands um, often. I'm going to take these screws. Out. I'm going to put plastic screws in. By the way, this is uh, I did this years and years years ago. It's really thick material. Uh, they don't make a chimney for this. Uh, now I use the Teflon, uh, thick Teflon wall stuff like I used in the six meter. So anyway, uh, I'm going to place the capacitors in here so you can see what they look like. They're going to be vertical with the puller bottom, and I'm going to shoot another video. Um, I'm not going to bolt them in, but I'll leave them in place, and then I'm going to attach the front panel, and you'll see the rotary switch, okay? So, I will be back in a second. I'm going to show you the right angle drive setup I'm going to use, too. Okay, so stay tuned. Be right back. Okay, so the capacitors are placed inside the amplifier, and you can see plenty of clearance. That has to come off the shaft, both quarter inch shafts. You can see, it'll slip on like this. set screws too tight right now but let's see if I can do it this way anyway there's a set screw on this that needs to be loosened and this basically just slips up on the shaft and it'll come out the front panel and I'll have a turns counter same over here and there's plenty of clearance you can hear and where the panel will be for the bottom okay so I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out real quick and then put the panel in and I'll drop these back in and you will see the rotary switch, progressively shorting. Be right back. Okay, so the rotary switch is installed. So I took the plate off the end, mounted it here. I have to redo the detent positions on there because uh, I'm going to move the contacts. I think the higher band coil will be over here, so I'm going to move the contacts up higher um, and then the common. I'm going to put up here, over here. So it's a nice short stretch to the load capacitor. Okay, pretty slick, huh? Take a look at that. Should have plenty of room. So, the higher band coil is going to go right here, vertical, hopefully, and then the the lower band coil right here. And then hopefully, probably the 160 coil over here. So, 160 coils, one quarter inch diameter material. 80 meter coil, three eighths. And then from there on up, half inch. So, I'm going to try to get it to get, you know, for it to get down on 160, but, you know, if, it, if I don't have enough room, I don't have enough room, whatever. You know, I have enough capacitance, so I'll try, but I don't really care for that band anyway, but 
you know, be neat. So the vacuum relays will go over either for here or back here, but I'll have a piece of that SFT 600 coax going to the output connector. So about it for now. So if you want to see what the panel is going to look like, I don't know if I'm going to use the stock metering, just have the backing plates relabeled or or have all another meter uh, panel made. I'm not sure yet, but uh, that'll be one of the last things I do. But uh, once I get these coils in, um, get everything all tuned, you know, backfeed it with my analyzer, then the rest is a uh, piece of cake. Well, like I said, I've done a lot of different amps over the years, and you now this uh, it's all about fit coils in, getting it tuned, and if I can get that done, then. The rest is uh, very simple. So, I'm going to use one inch wide copper strap. And once again, these contacts are doubled up. So, 40, 40, so it's 80. And I will bring this contact up here, next one here, and so on. So, the four contacts with all of them open be 160, then first position 80, 40, 20, 17. I mean, 15. If I don't use 160, then I could do 80, 40, 20, 17, 15. So it's going to be, hopefully, 160, 80, 40, 20, and 15. So I like 80. That's my uh, favorite band, 80 and, and 20. So that's about it. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more progress. And I have a spare one of these switches, so... Um, when I make them in the future, uh, I don't know if I'll use this switch. It's really big. I might use the, there's a 30 amp version, and I could use three sets of contacts and parallel them together to give me more current, but this is rated for a lot of voltage. I cut it for free, so why not use it, right? I didn't have the, the detent assembly, uh, so I had to, I bought that and I put that on years and years ago. I mean, it's, I did this switch, I modified it probably 15 years ago and I just been so swamped with amp work it's just this like I said is secondary to you know my my work you know and this is this is a personal thing and I just don't, I don't have time to do any of this stuff but I want to make one show it so someone wherever in the you know wherever they are located in the world wants one and they can afford it you know I'll make it uh, the other one went down, the 6 meter amp went down South America, it's out, out of the country, it's gone. Um, so, so I, uh, I'm reputable, I don't play games, I get things done as quick as I can, and that's about it. So, thanks for watching, please like, share, and subscribe. If you subscribe, you'll see the next video, you get a notification. So, lots of room. Uh, it's a room between the capacitor and the top cover and plenty between the walls so nothing to copy from you know that's the thing I'm designing all this from you know I'm laying it all out there's nothing I'm copying from it's basic design you know that's the same over and over but when it comes to picking the capacitors components whatever laying them out that's what takes time and experience so so I can do it once, and once and done, and have it continue to work. So, well, actually, I wanted to say one other thing. I'm going to end up probably using six of those 200 puff doorknob caps. If I only get it down on 80, I'll use four. I need more capacitance if I'm going to go down to, um, I need a minimum of like 1,200, so I'm going to put in six. So that's going to take up a bunch of room, but I'll make it work somehow. <laughs> if there's will, there's way. <laughs> and the uh, caster things are not installed. I'll have to rip them off one of the uh, other ones, so the track. So, once again, thanks for watching. Website is amprepairguy.com, 203 892 4119 73.